everybody, it's Kendall from the Recording Lounge Podcast, and today we're talking about drum editing in Nuendo 7. Uh, and we're talking about the sort of faux beat detective functions within Nuendo 7. And we're talking about just sort of general management of drums. So um, let's get started. First things first, I wanted to mention that I've got another video that I'm posting with this same exact song, and we're going to talk about how to manually edit it by hand. Now, this other technique would work in every DAW, um, so go check that video out if you're not in Nuendo and you're curious, or if you are in Nuendo, this is the manual way to do it, uh, and it's uh, just as effective, it just takes a little longer, but it can be very effective at editing drums. Um, so in this video, we're talking about the sort of beat detective type functions in Nuendo 7. Uh, so first things first, let's talk about how uh, we set this up. Now I've already got my drum edits going. Um, I've made my edits between my sections as I like them and I've picked the takes that I like. You can see uh, this file here, 50, 51, 53. We actually started on uh, you know, 49 or something. Uh, this is in a folder with multiple sessions. So, um, anyway, uh, we've got all these together. The first thing I want to do is group these tracks. Now, I've got a couple ways to group them. Uh, I've got my key command set up where I can create a folder track like that, which is useful. Uh, you can also create a group track uh, by creating a stereo group channel, and that can be helpful too. Uh, I have a key command set up that I have. Uh, bound to Control Shift Alt G. What that does is that puts a folder, puts my files in a folder, and creates a group track um, that we're going to call Drums. Okay. Now, uh, let me move down here. We're going to move our drum track up. Already had a drum track there, but that's okay. Um, so now you can see that um, we're going to call this Drums Edit. Uh, this is more just for organizational purposes, and we're going to call our group drums. Okay. Um, now you can see that all of our files, all of our tracks, are routed to drums edit, and the way that I did that uh, is by using a macro. So we're going to do, we're going to see here. I'm going to show you what I've got bound to it. So Control Alt Shift G, select the tracks to new folder and add group channel. These are the commands I have. Move selected tracks to new folder and mixer add track to selected group channel. And that's all you got to do. You can create this macro yourself and bind it to a key. It's very simple. Or you can do these commands individually. Um, so, next thing is we need to make sure that group editing is on. Now, if your files are out of sync with each other, then group editing might fail, and it will give you that warning. So make sure that you keep good practices of not editing one file differently than the other. Uh, it's really useful. Another way you can do this is, and I recommend doing it this way, is once you've got your comps uh, made of all the different takes that you like on the drums, go to your selection tool and... I have this bound to Control Shift B. I'm not sure what the default is, uh, but this is to bounce. So this will allow us to have our files completely synced and rendered or consolidated, however you want to uh, say that. In Pro Tools, you would say consolidated, but in Nuendo, it's bounce selection. So we've got our drums. We've got quite a few tracks here. Uh, now, the next thing I'm going to do is save this as a separate session. So this song is called I Wanted, and we're going to save this as I Wanted Drums Edited. Just in case you screw something up um, and you have an original of the session backed up. Um, so that's just safe practice. I always do that. Um, now, at this stage, we've got our group editing on. Uh, I have the key command bound Alt Shift Q. So what this allows us to do is utilize the quantize function. Now in Nuendo, the quantize uh, function works in a lot of different ways, but for drum editing, I'll show you how it works. It's very simple. So we have our slice rules up here, which essentially allow us to select what is our marker or our key or our reference for where it's going to slice. Typically speaking, in most songs, you can get by with kick and snare. Some songs, you might need kick, snare, rack, floor. Let me get rid of that mic. Uh, some songs, you might need kick, snare, hat. 
uh, etc. So let me show you how to edit these. So first things first, I turn all these off and I go into and you double click the files. Now it will bring up this editing dialog here, your editor. Now up here, currently edited audio vent, you can go to, let's go to kick, okay? And then we're going to go to hit points here and we're going to adjust our threshold so that we are triggering the kick hit points. You can zoom in as you want uh, and pull down this threshold until you're getting all the kick hit points. Essentially, in Pro Tools, the equivalent of this would be your transients. Uh, I mean, obviously, they're all they're all transients, but they call them hit points in Nuendo because they're German, and they uh, gotta love them. Anyway, uh, so this will locate your transients and uh, put hit points there, or markers. So now we'll go back up here. We've done our kick, and we'll go to snare. We'll back this off. There's actually not a ton of snare in this song. It's on the four of the beat and a lot of this, so uh, we're going to back this off. Okay, make sure that we're getting it. Now some of these individual ones, uh, these some little ghost notes and things, you don't necessarily need to edit, uh, and if you need to, you can do it by hand, uh, which is sort of my preference. Anything that's out of the scope of sort of the regular snare drums, I'll just edit by hand um, or leave alone because it's cleaner. Now we can check out the tom. Let's check out rack tom. Uh, there's a good amount of bleed on this tom, but uh, not too bad. We can see our one, two, three, four, five, six, potentially seven, eight hits there. So let's just pull this down till we get these. Okay. Let's go to our floor. Pull this all the way back. Okay, not too many there either. Good. So kick, snare, rack, floor. Those are usually what I go for. Now we go back to our quantize panel. Um, we're going to make sure all these are off, and we're going to do kick, we're going to do snare, we're going to do rack, and floor. And I just set the priorities all the way up. That will ensure that it will make a cut there. And I think what happens is, uh, if there's, for example, a kick or a snare together, or there's a tom and a snare together, uh, and you have, say, like if you're doing a build, and there's a snare and a tom uh, where you're building on like the floor tom and the, and the snare drum uh, it will if you have a higher priority on the snare it will cut from that first if the you know the, if the hits are uh, that close I think that that's my understanding of the type of you know decisions that this priority rule is telling the program to do so I'll set the toms to four now we have a couple other controls here we have slice range offset um, I generally like a 40 millisecond range. Distance at the minimum distance between two hit points. This ensures that uh, you won't get cutting really, really quickly. Um, you know that that it's not going to cut a buzz roll or something. And our offset is going to pull that back from the transient. And as you you can see this point here, as I adjust the offset, and this kind of depends. Uh, I've found 10 milliseconds to work minus 10 milliseconds to work pretty well. Um, but sometimes I've had luck with five. You just want to make sure it's not zero because then that's going to cut right at the transient and the fade will not necessarily work as well. So I usually like to pull it back. Not too much more than ten though. So let's set it at eight. Why not? Now we have our grid. So I usually like to do a sixteenth. It depends on the song of course. The song is 110 beats per minute. Uh, let's hear what it sounds like first. So the drums aren't bad at all. I mean, they're actually quite pretty close on time. The the thing is, I just want to make sure that uh, they're really tight. If we do uh, transparent events, which on my uh, Nuendo I have set to Alt T, you can see that they're fairly close. But uh, you know, this transient's not quite lining up. This one's almost there, almost there, almost there. Um, little rushing going on here up in this intro. 
not too bad over here. It's starting to rush a little bit more again. Kind of gets on, rushes a little, gets back on, you know, and it's and it's that's just how it is. And so I want to make sure this is really tight. So next thing we do is once we have our hit points, and you can see the red files are where uh, these are sort of grayed out. The red is where these slices are going to be made. Uh, so primarily on the kick, as you can see, some on the snare and on the toms. So when we do slice, it will make all of our cuts. A lot of hits made on the kick. And then once we make sure that we have this set to 8th or 16th, uh, which is generally what I do, um, we'll hit quantize. Now, we can hear what it sounds like now, but it's not too, not too impressive yet. Now we have to do crossfade. Okay, so crossfade will ensure that all these edits will have smooth fades in between them. So we'll do crossfade. And again, you can select the nudge amount, which is how far from the original transient this fade is. And I usually find that it does a pretty good job on its own of finding a good point. Um, but you can adjust this as you need to. Uh, you want to make sure it's not too close or too far away because sometimes you can get doubled hits and things like that. Uh, and you can also select the length of the crossfade. I'm just using my mouse wheel here to adjust it. Uh, again, I usually like pretty quick, under 15. Uh, it depends on the song. If it's a quick song, you know, I'm a little more apt to do something like 5. Uh, and if it's a faster song, and this song is not too fast, I want to make sure that it doesn't sound awkward. Uh, and you have to kind of play around with this a little bit. So we'll play it and just hear how it sounds. That sounds pretty good to me. The function works really well. Now that we've got our crossfades, we've done our edits, now it's a good idea to usually check the entire song. Uh, now I've already edited this song, so I know that it actually worked really well, but good places to check are fills. So uh, let's, let's check out a fill. Okay, it's not bad. Something like that you might want to check out. Make sure nothing's getting funky. Now, be, at this point, you can always grab a section and drag out the original, unedited, if you want, and make a new crossfade. Or, if you need to manually edit something, you can do that. So, it's a good idea at this stage, it's very easy for you to sort of play with this. Just go through the song and just listen to everything. Make sure there's nothing funky. Um, try to check any, any weird fades. Make sure there's no double notes. And then uh, from here, all you have to do is go back to your selection tool. Take all these again. Again, in my case, it's Control-Shift-B. And you can bounce the regions once again. And you will have edited regions of drums. And the nice thing about this is you now have a, a new session, I wanted edited drums, drums edited, where you have perfectly edited drums, no, you know, alternate takes, no edits done. You have consolidated, clean files. You have them in a folder. And whenever you're ready, uh, you can just keep on working and record everything else that you need to do. That's the last thing I wanted to mention about this, actually. Uh, this is a scratch track that we have of the guitar. And I find it really important to make sure to edit the drums early in the process. Um, we recorded the scratch guitars, and then we did the drums, and now we're editing those drums. Um, because this way, you don't have to worry so much about everybody else in the process, when tracking individually, if that is. Um, they don't have to worry so much about being on the click because the drums are now edited to the grid and so they can just follow the drums whereas if you record the drums and then the bass and then the guitars and then the vocals and then you go back and try to edit the drums there's a good chance that 
you will end up chasing your tail because everybody else played to the click, but they also played to the drums. Um, whether they like it or not, people naturally will try to lock onto a drummer uh, rather than a click. So why not just edit the drums early in the process and don't force people to play with a really loud click? You know, uh, when I when I do this type of thing, I will edit the drums and I'll still give them the click in their headphones or in the speakers whenever we're tracking the other instruments, uh, but it'll be very low, just enough to kind of hear the subdivisions or in case the drums cut out for a section. Um, so the click is really nice for that, but that way they can focus on just playing tight with the drums. So thanks for watching this video. Check out the Recording Lounge podcast and check out our other videos. Thanks.